Hi, Lyndon. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We have Lyndon Porco, who's been involved in two of my all-time favorite movie franchises. You essentially play Chucky in the, uh, the Cult of Chucky, and you just recently took over the reins as uh, Leprechaun in Leprechaun Returns. And uh, you've also worked in the uh, classic Little Man with the Waynes Brothers, and uh, just recently in uh, Nightmare Alley. I can't thank you enough for joining today. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Lyndon, you've been an actor now for most of your life since you were quite young. Uh, I want to jump into some of these all-time classic uh, film franchises, but I'd love to hear how it all started for you and uh, what uh, got you into the business. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it all started when I was kind of like five or six years old. I was... Um, my parents put me into uh, MTYP, which is uh, Manitoba Theater for Young People, um, back in Winnipeg, Canada, which is where I grew up. And, um, you know, I, I started enjoying it, and, you know, way back then. And then my parents, what really got me, like, really into it was um, I met Vern Troyer at the World of Wheels um, back in Winnipeg. And he was signing autographs at this car show, and he has he had the same type of or has the same type of dwarfism as me, and so my parents thought it would be a good idea for us to connect and you know chat about you know what it, it's life, what it's like to live life as a little person. And so, um, I mean, yeah, one thing led to another, and we really started clicking. And he invited me backstage, and so we got we had lunch with him that day. Uh, you know, all these things. And then, you know, he asked me what I was interested in, do in doing. And I said, well, you know, acting is always something I've, you know, thought about. Um, and so he was like, well, tell you what, I'll, you know, get my uh, manager to contact your parents and we'll try and get something for you. And, and so, you know, I can't remember exactly how long it was, but, uh, you know, it wasn't too long after that where, we got the call saying, hey, you know, can you send a tape down to, um, you know, and of Lyndon being active and doing all these activities because, you know, they're needing this, um, you know, little person to play the body and, and little man. And and yeah. so I had no idea at the time, obviously, like that that was, that was the stuff <laughs> they needed or that's what they wanted or whatever, right? So, you know, just sent it away and, you know, didn't hear anything for about, you know, two weeks to a month later, I guess it was. And then we got the call saying, hey, yeah, they loved you. We want to fly you down for a screen test and all this stuff like that. And I was like, holy smokes. Okay, you know, here we go. I mean, me being nine years old at the time, you yeah. know, didn't, didn't didn't necessarily know how lucky I was, right? You know, you you, you look back on it now and you're thinking, well, holy shit. You know? <laughs> like you, you, those those things only happen, you know, once in a lifetime to uh you know hopefully more in my life definitely you know i'd want those want those opportunities but um especially back then i i, I didn't realize how how lucky i had it um until until it was gone and until i can look back on it today and be like oh okay that's that was crazy um so but that's that is what um got me into the business and 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 truthfully how i fell in love with it because um, during the process, you know, the first day of Little Man, they had me actually like wearing a, a mask. And so they were just going to do that with my body. So, um, but, but then that didn't turn out the best on, on picture. And so they said, well, you know, we'll figure out a different way. And, um, and then they just used, started saying, oh, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to give them a, a skull cap, put some red triangles on it and that'll be like the outline for the green screen and and whatnot so that when you know Marlon does it his actions on green screen they can match it up to the actions I did as as the body but I still memorized all had memorized all the lines and, and did all that stuff when I was you know nine years old um and I was acting with the rest of the cast and then I it kind of felt bad for Marlon because he was doing the stuff afterwards basically yeah with just with Keenan reading the lines to him and then um you know Marlon acting out those things and then trying to mimic the movements that I did so it was it was kind of an interesting kind of the way 
that it went. But um, you know, it was looking back on it, it, it was it was absolutely unbelievable. And um, you know, I, I owe my career to to Vern Troy at the end of the day. That's what it comes down to. He 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 got me into this business. He he got me, he had me falling in love with it. And um, you know, I, I haven't looked back ever since. Um, so yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. I mean, just a, a few years after, you know, meeting Vernon, obviously landing, you know, this role and yeah, I mean, essentially you're the star of the film and little man, I mean, you probably have the most, your body has the most screen time, right. <laughs> in, the, in the film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, working with Keenan Ivory Waynes and, and Marlon Waynes too. I mean, did you guys have to, like you and Marlon have to sync at all, or is, was it kind of like how with Chucky, everything's kind of shot and then, Brad Dorif kind of does his dialogue afterwards. Is that kind of how it works too for Little Man? Um, yeah. So because I was uh, nine years old, they shot, I only could shoot like eight hours mm -hmm. with me during the day. So after those eight hours were done where they shot with me, they would go and do the green screen with Marlon. Gotcha. Um, and so he would just, he would watch the playback of kind of the actions I did and then they'd have they do the sync they'd try and sync it up where so his his actions on the green screen screen well he was predominantly I believe like sitting on a chair on a on a on a I don't even know what you call those what are those uh, chairs that you can spin on I don't know you oh know? Yeah. yeah yeah but so he was sitting on that so that way he his he would just move his body and you know his head would move with it right so um yeah, so that's, the, I mean, I, I remember just, you know, me being done and being, oh, I don't want to leave yet. I don't want to leave yet. And I would stay and I'd watch for like an hour or two afterwards um, because I, I loved, I love, I love it so much. Like just being on a set is something that you, um, you know, some people I feel like, you know, maybe take advantage, uh, uh, not advantage of, but take for granted. For granted yeah. Yeah. You, because, because, uh, you know, you know, it's not it's not all you know sunshine and rainbows per se in this industry that's for sure so uh the times where you're not necessarily working is you you look back and you reflect on those times and like you know those were some of the best times of, of my life and it, it's it's wonderful i love it i absolutely love it absolutely absolutely and do you still keep in contact with any of the waynes brothers at all or uh, not per se, no. You know, we we tried to keep in contact with with some of them for for a while, but you know, as as time goes on, things yeah. kind of fade, and it's just kind of the way the world and works, and and especially in this industry, work. You know, you, yeah. you try and hang out, hang on to those connections for as long as you can, and then, you know, it's you know, eventually you lose contact. It's just the way it is. So, um, you know, I, I do, you know reach out every so often to Marlon on, on Instagram and whatnot. And yeah. he, he, you know, he likes the a post uh, and, you know, he likes a comment. I comment on his things or whatever it is, but you know, he, he's, 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 he's killing it right now too. So yeah. it's, it's great to see. Absolutely. And um, definitely want to jump into the Chucky series and yeah. um, kind of the same theme, you know, cult of Chucky sort of, you know, reinvigorize the, uh, the Chucky franchise. And, um, you know, you essentially play uh, Chucky, right. And the, 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 all the, the essential body movements kind of different from the doll, the running. Yeah. Yeah not, like yeah. not, not all of them. I, I, I was, I was the body double. So mm -hmm. when, you know, if uh, they did, so when there was the gurney and then the feet were running underneath the gurney, I remember doing those shots. I don't know exactly what shots they used of mine or, or whatnot, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, there was a, a section where uh, they were uh, out in the, in the hallway and they needed, they wanted a bigger shadow for Chucky. So then I did that and I was kind of walking as, as Chucky, um, that kind of thing. Um, for some of the stunts, I as well I played because there was the three Chuckies in in a few of those those kills, um, and then uh, so I you know I, I'd have to go and I'd have to change into the different Chuckies in order to kind of get the get the proportions right for the for camera and and whatnot yeah. as well. So um, did did that a bit. 
Um, but yeah, no, that was, that was, uh, that was an awesome experience as well. Um, you know, it was filmed back in Winnipeg where I was from. So that was, that was, it was awesome. Uh, and, uh, I mean, yeah, Dawn was, uh, it, it was cool. I, I tell this story a lot, but it, it really stood out to me because my first day on set, you know, the actors go and have lunch and they usually sit together and, and then, you know, the directors and producers all sit at a table and discuss, you know, the next, uh, you know, the next half of the day or the next day or whatever it is. And, you know, Don came and, and sat at, you know, the actor's table and just hung out with us and ate. And I was just so surprised at this because you just don't see that very often. Uh, but, th but that just goes to show how much of a family, you know, this Chucky franchise is. And, and so that, that it was, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome when you, when you look back and you, and you see that, cause it's like, okay, it's, it's not all business. It's, it's a, it's a family at the end of the day. And that's, and that's what it's all about. It's all, that's, that's what it's all about. It's all about family and, and giving back to, and, and then the fans too, right? Like the, it's horror fans are so underappreciated yeah. in, in, in the world of, of film because they 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 make the horror franchise in my opinion they make the horror franchise 100 percent, and they, and they love it to, to death and it's awesome and that's why i love it so much and that's why i love going to you know conventions and giving back and talking to them and and, and just just hanging out because those are you know those those remind us as actors of why we're in this business in the first place yeah yeah um, we uh we just recently interviewed uh, your old friend Mark Holton, Ozzy, yeah. and yeah. and yeah, and he, uh, you know, again brought up the same same thing as the the horror fans. I mean, definitely. I mean, it's 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 a, you know, an amazing amazing uh, fandom, right? And uh, definitely the the horror genre. I mean, even just going back uh, to the seventies and the eighties, and you know, the, the genres that we had in those you know killer franchises. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely. I mean, you're, you're experiencing firsthand, right. And I've, I've had the opportunity to attend, you know, some of the, um, conventions and I can't wait to, you know, see you in person as well too. So you're seeing it firsthand, um, yeah. which is unbelievable. I I'm just new to it too. And, uh, you know, at the start, I, I was just about to get into it actually at the beginning of COVID yeah. and then it kind of hit. So I wasn't, you know, traveling or, or doing all that stuff as well. So, um, just getting back into it this year which is nice and um you know it's you know I, I miss it already you know as soon as you're gone you know you, you kind of have the it's you kind of have that rush like, yeah. when, like when you're on set and, and you know you do you doing that it, it's, it's wonderful and then you know you come back home and you know it's back to reality all right you know like <laughs> when you, when's when's the next audition when's you know what am I gonna do in between those and the, so those kind of things but it's 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 wonderful to to go to these uh conventions and just uh, chat and and hang out and you know just give back because you know at the end of the day that's that's what that's why we create these these films is to you know build that connection and have like oh like what did you like about this or what did you think about this or that you know what i mean so that's at the end of the day that's it's just awesome yeah, and, and you also mentioned you know, how wonderful uh, it was working with uh, Don Mancini. And we've interviewed uh, a few of the castmates of the Chucky series. Um, yeah. phenom phenomenal show. And I can't wait for season two, which is going to come out in the next few months. Um, but we interviewed um, Annie Briggs, who played uh, Miss Fairchild, and Rochelle Cassius, who played Detective Evans. And yeah, yeah, just nothing but wonderful things that they mentioned, you know, working with uh, the legend uh Don Mancini as well too and I know you know with uh with the curse of Chucky which came before you know we got that little scene with uh Andy you know Alex Vincent you know returning and then we got him you know full-blown in the uh the cult of Chucky and then obviously in the series did your did you have a chance to work with him in the cult of Chucky um in any of the scenes or I didn't po me personally no um but I was there when they were filming one of the scenes where he was in the, the white room and he was stomping on Chucky's head. I got okay. to see that. I got to oh, see cool. that live. And that oh, was awesome. That was fucking amazing. 
that was it was it was so cool to see that i love i love practical effects mm -hmm. practical yeah. effects make make films in my opinion and so going forward in my career i i always want to try and advocate towards practical effects because don't get me wrong they're a lot harder to you know make sure everything works properly but the picture is so much nicer and just in my personal opinion but i agree too i agree too and you sort of saw that with uh the new ghostbusters movie that came out where there was more practical effects than uh, cgi which i actually liked the uh the remake as well but the the latest ghostbusters movie that came out they kind of went back to what made the movie great and you get a little distracted with cgi i love practical effects effects and when done right uh, i mean they look uh, amazing absolutely i 100 percent agree and uh, I mean, I, I can't let you sneak out without asking, did you get a chance to meet Brad Dorif at all? I know he usually shoots his scenes afterwards, but did you get a chance no, to meet him? No, so? no, unfortunately I didn't. That would have that been awesome. Unfortunately, I, I have not met him yet, no. Yeah. Uh, well, ho hopefully, maybe they'll, I mean, maybe they'll sneak you in in season two if they haven't already and get a chance to, to work with them. And, and That'd be awesome. Um, and uh, definitely, definitely, I mean, I was really excited. I know it was a few years back, but we got a true sequel to the Leprechaun uh, franchise. I mean, you take over one of the most iconic uh, roles and horror villains in, um, in film history. Um, so this is a true sequel, and it's kind of similar to what we got with Halloween, um, where it was a direct, actually, they kind of skipped through some of the uh, the films. and. Um, the Leprechaun franchise is, is kind of unique. Like every uh, movie after the first um, didn't really have a lot to do with the uh, the first film. Mm -hmm. um, so was there any added pressure into returning to this role and taking over the legendary role that uh, Warwick Davis uh, held for many years? Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't try and put the pressure on myself when it came to that. I, I you know, anybody, you know, I, to be honest, going into it I wasn't a huge like fan of horror going into it I didn't understand the appreciation of horror I was always scared of horror so I stayed away from it growing up and so you know I, but but you know auditioning and, and then you know knowing about the franchise of Leprechaun and you know seeing everything that has happened afterwards and especially with the fans um you know it's it's such like it's kind of because everybody's asked that question of like you know is it pressure was it pressure and I really didn't try to put myself in, into those um, it had to have that pressure because I know that like I, I'm a completely different person than than Warwick Davis I will never replace Warwick Davis as Leprechaun it's just it's not going to happen he will always be the original Leprechaun. It's just the way it is. And I understand that and I appreciate that. But I also knew going into it that I could do the Leprechaun justice because of my, you know, previous skills of, you know, acting and, you know, been training for, you know, multiple years. Um, and I knew that, you know, I could go in there and give 110%. And, you know, at the end of the day, all I could do is go, go there and do that. And if I was questioning anything, it wouldn't have turned out the way it did or or you know I would have been you know constantly second guessing myself which as an actor you just never want to do in the first place um so I uh yeah I didn't I didn't really try I didn't really put the pressure on myself uh, I knew that I could go in there and and do what I needed to do and and you know whatever I was asked you just do it and um, you know, and at the end of the day, you have fun with it too, because the Leprechaun is ultimately having a ton of fun. Yeah. So, and that's what I did. That's what I did, and it was it was awesome because the first scene, um, you know, that we shot, that I personally shot, was me coming out of Ozzy's stomach, and so you know that kind of opens up the floodgates, you know, no pun intended. But, uh, you know, it's, 
right uh, right then and there it's first in the first scene of, of filming so it was like okay it's time to get to work yep okay blood all over me let's do this let's go let's have fun and then it was just an absolute blast yeah absolute blast yeah i mean our, our man ozzy can't can't catch a break man he took a beating in the first film took an even worse beating in this one i was so excited to see his character return because we're kind of getting you know going back to the roots um, yeah. getting some of those legacy characters back and you absolutely nailed it in this role um i, I, I was i was a little hesitant because i'm like how are we going to replace warwick davis right i mean this is going to be tough. As, as the fans should be as the fans should be you know we've grown we've grown up with him you know for most of our lives and you absolutely nailed it the look was great the voice was awesome too um and also too there's some mumblings of a sequel to this film as well too um i don't know if you're allowed to to say anything yet but are, are I, I, I i would love i would love if there was a, a sequel yeah. um you know i i i haven't heard anything you know on my end when it comes to it um so you know that could mean that you know well it is coming back who knows you know but um i would i would love if if i was asked and you know somebody said hey that's you know, we, we want you to come back and we'll do, to do a sequel. Uh, I would hesitate for no seconds <laughs> and say yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I would I would absolutely love to. Um, but, you know, still waiting for that call. Yeah, I mean, you you absolutely nailed it. And this was a really fun movie as well, too. I mean, it was more of a modern take, obviously, as well, too, with kind of some of the things that are going on in, in today's day and age. Yeah. Um, I, I personally would love to see you uh, return uh, as well, too. So um, when I when I initially um, saw, you know, there was some news about there being, uh, you know, a potential sequel for Leprechaun Returns or just a new sequel for Leprechaun, I was automatically assuming that we would see you back. And I don't think the fans would be disappointed. I mean, you made the role your own and we're we're excited for for some more Leprechaun. Why don't we get Leprechaun versus Leprechaun? Why don't we get that? um that'd be awesome too that would be that'd be cool that'd be cool uh money definitely for sure would probably come down to it um but uh yeah no i think uh you know the direction of the leprechaun is so it could go it can go so many different ways just based on every single movie that they've done of the leprechaun right so um you know you could you could do in the West, you could do, you know, a vampire kind of thing. I think, you know, both of those would probably be um, some of the strongest choices just at, right out of the gate that comes to the top of my mind. Yeah. Um, Leprechaun in the West would be awesome too. That'd be really cool. I think, I think that, that would be, that'd be an absolute smash hit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Especially with today's day and age with uh uh, the, the, the genre of uh, the Westerns, you know, there's the Tulsa King that's coming out now with Stallone. Um, and you got the, um, forgive me, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but the, the show on Paramount as well, too, and Peacock, uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yellowstone, yes. Yeah, yeah. Prequels to Yellowstone, too. I mean, that, that genre is really picking up right now, too. And imagine the Leprechaun in the West. We've seen him in space. We've seen him in Vegas. Why don't we see him in the West? Yeah. There as well, too. That would be cool. And um, forgive me for not asking this question earlier, but uh, what is your favorite horror franchise? Is there a specific film or a franchise that you're uh, that um, you grew up with? Love? Well, one, one, yeah. I mean, I was, I was definitely, I was always scared of horror growing up. Mm -hmm. right? So one, one that really sticks with me though is um, back in the day, me and my buddies when we would have, you know sleepover when we were younger we would we'd put on the, the poltergeist oh yeah and so that scared the living shit out of us just it was it was crazy and i remember because one of our you know a buddy's friends dad would put on a skeleton costume and he'd turn off the breaker and turn off all and so the lights would go off and he'd come downstairs in the skeleton costume and just run around and we'd be running around, running around. And I remember we were doing it at, uh, 
one of it was one of the uh, buddies' birthdays, and he did that. And one of my buddies, one of my buddies, ran straight in, into the wall and like almost knocked him. So it's it was at the time it was like holy crap, but also absolutely hilarious because he was just looking back, looking back, and whap oh, right into the wall. <laughs> Oh my God, it was so funny. I remember that. I remember it to this day. It was oh, just man. so funny. But yeah, so that, that the Poltergeist definitely uh, holds a special place in my own. Poltergeist was scary. The, the second one was really scary too, especially with the old man. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember the second one with the old man where he comes and knocks on the door and he's really a spirit, the pastor. Um, I think, I think, I, I think I, I've seen it, but I'm trying to, can't remember exactly. And there was there was like a poltergeist curse supposedly that was going around. There was after each film, there was like deaths that were happening. Um, I think the the older sister died after shooting the first movie. Um, after the second film was shot, the uh, the Indian and the old man passed away. And then I think after the third movie, the little girl passed away too. So there was like a poltergeist curse. That was going on. Um, I definitely. Now that I know that, I definitely will not be. If they asked, I'm saying no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, and um, I mean, I know you've worked with you know many talents. Is there a specific actor or actress that you haven't worked with yet that you're still hoping to to work with one day, or is there a horror franchise that you want to join that you haven't worked with yet? Oh man, that's you. You asking? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, N- Natalie Portman, I would love to work with her. Yeah. Um, I think she's a fantastic actress. Uh, you know, I'm trying to see. I mean, as far as horror and whatnot, um, you know, being a part of some of the two biggest franchises in, in it it's it's pretty pretty hard to top when it comes to it but you know the you play the main guys too yeah i think i think when it came to you know like maybe like halloween or yeah. uh, you know maybe like you know friday the 13th or like seeing like a mini jason would be kind of crazy Ooh, um, that'd be cool that'd be cool to so young jason well, I don't know if you know, there were some updates on Friday the 13th, and, and there's that, that franchise has been going through legal battles, but apparently they've come up come with a resolution to where they can make anything prior to, which might not be the best, but basically they can't use any adult Jason. I don't even think they can use the name Friday the 13th, or there's some restrictions, right, where we might get like a prequel to mm-hmm. where like we see like a young Jason um but we can't see him in the mask you know donning the mask or anything that we see within the sequels so that might be something in the works maybe we could see a young uh jason and that might be something that we could see you in yeah i i, I gotta definitely have an have an idea when it comes to you know whether whether it's you know a jason kind of idea yeah. or not but it's uh i definitely have an idea in my head that i want to put down on paper to maybe even create uh, uh awesome. you know, maybe even a short to uh, at the start and then and then turn it into a feature but um i i kind of i kind of got an idea that i think would would spike some interest eventually so i'll, uh, I'll keep that to myself for now but i hopefully let it out sooner rather than later awesome and i'm, I'm also an aspiring writer so anything that i can do to help i'd love to be creative oh. with you as well too so. okay yeah i'll definitely keep you that'd be awesome i'd love that and i do want to touch on a movie i'm not sure if you're allowed to to talk about it yet but the stream uh just from looking into this i mean, looking at the cast i mean tony todd danielle harris I and mean, you're in it as well too um are you able to speak about this film at all is this something that's going to be around the horror realm or what's what's this film about I believe so. You know, uh, you know, COVID kind of took a damper on that for me as well. Um, I actually haven't even like filmed anything for it as of yet. So I might, I might not. I mean, I know the original plan was for me to, you know, hopefully be in it at, at, at some point, but um, right now there's, there's nothing kind of going on when it comes to that for me, but I can tell you that having read 
having read it, it it'll be something to definitely look out for. for Excellent. Sure. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, the cast is insane, too. I mean, there's other legends on there as well. So it seems like it would be something. I mean, I, I love Danielle Harris, um, you know, part of the Halloween franchise, right? So I'd love to see, yeah. um, I, you know, and obviously, as soon as we get some more info, I'd love to, to hear more about it. And um, are you able to share, do you have any other upcoming projects that we should be looking for? Or? Uh, as of right now, I can't say um i do have something that i can hopefully announce in the next couple of months uh, but as of right now i unfortunately no i'm i'm just writing um you know my own thing right now with a colleague of mine um hopefully have that come in you know at least the script done by the end of this year uh, is, is the goal for that uh and then, you know, just keep on trucking along when it comes to auditions and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I always use that as an opportunity to, for round two. So as soon as we get more details on the upcoming projects, we try to, to see if we can get the guests to, to return. And obviously, we mentioned earlier that um, you, know, you do want to get back into the uh, convention circuit. Are you booked for anything coming up? Anything that we could share with the fans? Uh, Houston, um, I believe I'm going to, and then, uh, is it Virginia? I think it's Virginia as well, and then, um, I'm going to the UK, actually. Oh, nice. So we'll, we'll be sure to, uh, to list those, uh, once we post the interview as well, too, so fans can, uh, can, obviously they want to see you and be able to get your autograph, and are you on, um, cameo at all or are you able to are fans able I am, to yeah i am on I, I am on cameo um not as active as i probably should be when it comes to, to cameo unfortunately um uh just because I got, I got a lot going on in personal and you know day-to-day -day life as well so um but yeah definitely you can definitely reach out to me on there as well i will try my best to get back to you as, as quickly as possible um and then just you know all the links you know yeah. uh, twitter and and Instagram and uh, you know Facebook. Um, it's just my basically my name. Facebook is just it says real London Porco instead of just London Porco. So yeah. Now we'll be sure to share your upcoming conventions and also for fans to to reach on social media and, and cameo. And uh, the fan in me has to ask you know before we sign off, are we able to get a quick Leprechaun line before we sign off or Leprechaun laugh today? Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you got a, You got a favorite line in the in the movie? On there, I mean, when you when you came out of uh, Ozzy's stomach, I mean that was awesome as well too. Um, but I'll definitely whatever, whatever your go to line is, I, I'd love to to hear it. Twenty five years, then I've got a lot of killing to make up for. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. That was amazing. No, thank you very much. You can't oh, wait to, to share with the fans. And uh, Lyndon, again, thank you for, for being flexible with scheduling and being absolutely. Able to thank you as well. Thank you as well. Can't wait to see and hear more about these upcoming projects and can't wait to uh, get you back in here for round two again, Lyndon. Thank you so absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Take care. See ya. Thank you.